requires courage and strength. Not many are willing to move out of their comfort zone, but Kevin Omolo is a true risk taker. Let's hear more. Kevin, take us through your journey. Yeah, I think my journalistic journeys may be traced back to high school, primary school. Uh, when I was a student uh, at Bungukoraga Primary School and Rangira Primary School, both in Nyando, I happened to become a debate prefect. And at this point, I think I was good in communication, both written and spoken. So this is where I honed my skills in communicating. And uh, my love for media began when I could listen to KBC radio. Uh, my father was a good uh, listener and uh, an ardent listener of KBC Swahili service. So anytime he's not around, I would also switch on the radio and uh, listen to uh, Zilizo Pendwa. And sometimes it was nice listening to people like Omuga Kabisai and the rest, especially around lunchtime. But then when I went to high school, uh, I think uh, I was good in languages, so I got more interest in writing. Uh, at Utinoyo High School, Nyando and uh, Gendia High School in Homa Bay. So I was sure what I wanted to do. By the time I was leaving campus, uh, when I applied for uh, journalism and mass communication course at Masinde Muliro University in Kakamega, and uh, I was invited to take up the course, and uh, that is where everything now uh, blew out. I became an editor of the university magazine. Wow. I was also a presenter in the university station, and uh, I think this experience uh, enabled me to get to, uh, to the insight of journalism. And uh, immediately I got out of school, I got employed by Standard as a correspondent in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. I worked uh, through the ranks and uh, in 2021, I thought I needed to move out. So I resigned. Wow, and, uh, you yeah. resigned. Yeah. That's, that's a weird decision to make. You worked up the ranks, so some Mefika piloted you, and then you decided to resign. Why, why, why did you make that decision? I think I thought I had achieved what I wanted to achieve in the mainstream, mm -hmm. and uh, there are things that I was looking at maybe differently. Uh, if you look at, um, especially, uh, the media was transforming, mm -hmm. and uh, the audience is transforming, and I was feeling there is a gap especially among the youths. So I started working out on a solution that I thought I could only manage when I'm out of uh, uh, the, the, the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. So that is how we came up with the Lake Region Bulletin, which is a digital multimedia platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, we focused much on giving the youth a voice. Okay. Yeah. So you, when exactly did you start thinking I should start Lake Region Bulletin? Uh, I think I would uh, say uh, when I was joining uh, the mainstream media after campus, I gave myself five years. Uh, I'm not into employment per se, but since there is this experience that I needed out there, a lot of things that uh, I was looking into, I could only get the chance in the media setup. So I had an ambition of working only for five years and getting out. And I'm telling you, sometimes you get into employment and it's interesting, you don't want to leave. So I think after five years, I started working on an exit strategy. So I attended a number of trainings. I would um, uh, attribute some of them to DW Academy, where I got hands-on uh, training on uh, digital media. And since uh, the world was also moving towards digital media, I thought this is the opportunity to now get out and uh, uh, utilize the knowledge and the skills that I've gained through uh, some of these trainings. So what gave you the drive uh, now that young people are looking for employment, yet you decided to reside? Yeah. yeah, I think uh, it's, it's all about understanding yourself and what you want in life. Like I've mentioned before, 
I, I had a vision, I had targets that I had to achieve within specific timelines. So I was thinking uh, if I remain here, get comfortable, I may not achieve what I have in myself. I understand that not everybody is into employment, not everybody is into self-employment. So once you understand yourself, it's easier to uh, have targets in your life and what you want to achieve. So the drive was, uh, I have a target. What do I do to achieve this target? So you have to work towards that target. And that was the drive uh, to ensure that I get out and uh, establish what I wanted to establish. And how did your family or friends take your decision to resign at such a young age? I think it was difficult. I couldn't share it with a number of people. And uh, by the way, I drafted my resignation letter three months before resigning. So it was okay. somewhere uh, waiting for You had already submission. made up your mind, yes. yeah? Uh -huh. So I have a few friends that I shared with. I think within the workplace it was only one person that I told this is what I'm planning. Uh, with my family, wife, children, brothers, I never shared anything until the final month. Mm -hmm. So I approached them and told them I feel I'm getting out of employment. I think I need to do some other things. And uh, the obvious questions, uh, you know, how are you going to survive? Mm -hmm. uh, what is next for you? But if you plan your life well, it's very easy to make such a decision. It's not something that you'd advise someone to wake up one day and say, I'm resigning. Mm -hmm. So it's something I have planned over time. And uh, by the time I was now getting out, it was ripe for me to get out. And so what, uh, what was the goal behind starting the Lake Region Bulletin? Yeah, when I was in um, a standard media, uh, I ventured more on feature writing, especially on some of the least told stories, environment, agriculture. But then sometimes you do some of these stories and you interact mostly with the old people who are in agriculture. You interact with old people who are in environment, uh, climate change issues. But once in a while, when you get a young person in agriculture, you feel motivated and you're like, this is a story that needs to be told. So the more you tell these stories, the more you get interested into more. Mm -hmm. And I think it reached a time I was now feeling, why don't I now focus on telling the stories of these young people who are my colleagues? Because at some point, by the way, I felt uh, I, I needed to get out and venture into agriculture because you could go telling these stories and you find these people are struggling. Uh, but they're making it. Most of them were getting into agriculture maybe because they're schooled, but they can't get employment. So they're saying, let me do this as I look for employment. But once you do these stories and uh, people come in and encourage them, they find that it's uh, uh, the, the opportunities that they have in the simple things that they're doing is so enormous. But if those stories are not told uh, to the world for some people to emulate or for some networking to happen to them, then uh, they feel discouraged. So some of the people that we did their stories, uh, we found out that they were getting some of these networks. Someone is calling you that I saw a story about so-and-so. Can I have the contact? I want to do this and that with them. So you feel encouraged and uh, it moves you. So I believe starting a media organization is needs a lot of work. Yeah. So how did you go about it? Uh, one, I think uh, everything is always possible. Uh, it uh, just determines how much effort you put into it. So for me, having worked in the mainstream media, I understood how uh, the media operates. So when I was thinking of now establishing this, I had to go into consultation, go to friends, uh, colleagues, and ask questions on maybe some of the things that you feel uh, you needed to understand before you can establish it. I also have friends and people I know who started media houses and they collapsed. And uh, you could find even some of your friends discouraging you, telling you, no, I, I don't think this is the best age for you to do it. But sometimes when you have a vision and you want to achieve it, you just have to get out there. And uh, everything has consequences. Every decision that you make has consequences. So I decided uh, every uh, information that I needed to establish it, I have it. I've evaluated the pros and cons, and I uh, discovered that yes, it's something that I can do. Yeah. 
Speaking of media houses that have collapsed, yeah. did you ever think to have a backup plan in case something like that happened to you? Sure, I had a backup plan. Uh, uh, I had been uh, doing part-time teaching at Maseno University uh, and I thought this was an opportunity for me to understand the other side of life. You know, in the media we have the practice and the academia. So this gave me an opportunity to have a backup uh, plan such that it's not what I was looking at as the immediate thing uh, to sustain myself, but I was doing other businesses on the site and also using the same to get networking to support uh, the media house and also support myself and the family. Mm -hmm. So, because in initial stages, you are likely, for any business, you do not expect to start getting income immediately. So if you don't have a backup plan, it's, it's, it's disastrous, yeah. Yeah. And uh, how has that experience been owning your own media organization? Yes, I think uh, for every self-employment, there is always that aspect of freedom. There's aspect of experimenting a lot of things, which you cannot do in, uh, in when you are employed. Mm -hmm. So it gives me an opportunity to try out things. Some of them work, some don't. If they don't work, we come back and try to find out why didn't it work? What can we do to improve this and that? Uh, there is also that freedom of making decision. Uh, when you're employed, uh, there are decisions that have to go through bureaucratic processes. So by the time that decision is, is made, they look at a lot of implications, such as uh, financial, uh, media ownership and all that. So when you have this opportunity, I think uh, it has been beneficial to a number of people. We have young people who are uh, missing opportunities because they can't get into the media houses. Some of them get out of campus and they think, I have to work for the mainstream or the big media houses. And once they fail to get those opportunities, a lot of them get into depression. So we've been providing space for some of these people. People are doing uh, good write-ups uh, and, and they want a space where they can publish some of this because they. Uh, the media is just a platform for you to express your feeling, express what you have. And uh, I find it uh, very easy when I have to make decisions on who I can give an opportunity to express themselves, which they may not find out there. And uh, seeing that you have tasted the mainstream media and now you're running your own media organization, what unique thing would you say you're doing that other media houses are yet to do? Uh, I think like uh, when we were beginning, uh, you do not have resources. So there is the aspect of having uh, uh, of the human resource, uh, which is a disadvantage on our side. Mm -hmm. So it meant going for the young people who are not yet out there, uh, who will not be demanding so much. But this comes uh, with a disadvantage that you have to invest a lot in them before they can get there. So I think we provide like a mentorship uh, opportunity because if you get people coming out of campus, people have diploma, degree, getting out of campus, and you give them an opportunity and you walk them through, uh, after two, three, four months, five months, then you see someone can produce a content uh, that is acceptable. Mm -hmm. Then you feel this is an achievement. Providing opportunities for uh, like a lot of uh, media related organization or that the organizations that support media. Some give grants to journalists to do stories. Some of the freelance writers do not have space where they can publish their stories. So if you provide this, because the, for the mainstream media, it's it's a bit tricky for them to accept many of, of, of these uh, freelance writers. So if you can do it as, um, as an alternative media, that what we are providing, you find we are giving space for these people where they can express themselves and also satisfy their need to communicate because media is all about communication mm -hmm. and passing a message here. Yeah. And seeing that you took that risk and you decided, let me resign and start this, yeah. what are your achievements so far? Uh, what I would want to say one is the achievement because when I was getting out, I have friends and, uh, and foes who are predicting that uh, you might not go past two months, mm. you see? Mm. So once you manage to go past that, then you feel you have achieved something. Mm. But what makes me glad is that 
you are providing space for people who would otherwise lack space where they can express themselves, especially the youth. Uh, then you are also providing mentorship programs. Uh, like currently we, are, we, we have four interns from the local universities. So when uh, they come in, like I told you, I also teach uh, in the university, and you see the kind of trouble they have even getting attachment because there are so many students but few media organizations. If you come to online, I think I've also achieved something by providing um, authentic uh, media platform. In the digital platform today, we have a lot of digital outlets, and most of them are not uh, run ethically and professionally. Most of them are looking into scandals. Uh, so and so is engaged in one, two, three, for the purposes of just uh, capturing and moving uh, uh, the audience. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the experience that you have in the mainstream, we are trying to bring that mainstream to the local to the community. Local. Uh -huh. So I think that's an achievement that you have made uh, and we are not looking into competition, mm -hmm. but filling the gap that is left by either the mainstream or the digital media, which are uh, running in an eth unethical manner. Speaking of competition, have you met a, <laughs> a sort of an organization that is just like yours and you feel like, eh, eh, kuna kashida kana kuja? Uh, yeah, obviously, we, if you are in the game, you are not alone. Mm. We have a number of people. So we look at uh, uh, what, what in addition do you have that mm. the other organization may not have. Mm. One, uh, I, I, I came with the experience from the mainstream media and the networking from the mainstream media. So it was easier to divert them that, oh, I'm no longer there. I this is here. where I am now. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our, uh, I would say competitors, but we are not competing. Uh, most of them have not had experience in the media. Mm -hmm. Most of them are not accredited by the authorities that uh, regulate the media. So you cannot put a face to most of them. Yeah. So there is just some uh, site uh, that is churning out information, uh, mostly unethical, but you can't put a face. Most of their writers is by our reporter. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so we, 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 when we are coming out as providing an alternative, which would be uh, uh, like a mainstream media in a local society, mm -hmm. but providing everything that the other mainstream media would be providing. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we have spoken about the achievements. What about the challenges? Uh, what challenges did you encounter while doing this? Yeah, I think the challenge uh, with every new thing, uh, you are always getting into uncharted waters. Mm -hmm. You may not know how deep it is. So uh, when we are coming out and uh, we are starting uh, Lake Region Bulletin, uh, we didn't know uh, one, who is the audience that we are going to target? Mm -hmm. So you touch this and that, touch this and that, and at the end you find out that this is where our strength is. So when we discovered our strength is in telling the stories of the youth, uh, we overcame that challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had the challenge of finances, which we haven't overcome yet, because when you are starting out, uh, financing is not very easy. Like for my case where I used part of my savings uh, to invest into one, two, three, to start up the, the, the business, it was, it was not easy. Because now you are no longer salaried. Uh, you have to survive from your saving and it is part of the saving that you have to invest in, in this. So you find that it takes time to pick up. You need equipment, you need space, uh, you need to pay bills. You also need to uh, maybe remunerate those who are helping you around. So this is a big challenge. So, if, uh, but we get a number of people coming in. Some of them uh, want to support in a way, but uh, not many of them would support you if they can't see that resilience. So someone would be expecting that if you run this thing for two years, then we believe it's serious. Yeah. But no one would want to support you when you are. <laughs> two months old, true. eight months old, one year old. Mm -hmm. But these are challenges that we hope uh, we'll get through. Okay. Yeah. 
and uh, where do you see a future in Lake Region Bulletin? Yeah, I think when we were starting up, we were to bring an alternative uh, digital multimedia platform, and that is where we see ourselves. We see ourselves having a studio, we see ourselves having uh, enough mentorship, uh, uh, enough staff that can help in the mentorship program, where we can uh, produce content for uh, audio, video, text, pictures. So with this, we are looking into an all-rounded journalist such that people who come in as, um, as interns or those who come in on attachment can come out as fully um, molded journalists who can fit in any, uh, any sector. So this is not something that can be achieved very soon. We know it takes time. And uh, our hope is that once we get more people coming in to support, um, more networking, then we are able to achieve that. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, you are a risk taker, that's yeah. for sure. Mm. But uh, what can you tell someone out there who believes maybe Nikika kwa employment ntaweza ku sustain myself, you know? But they don't think taking that risk is worth it. What can you say? I think anything that anyone does has a risk. Even in employment, you risk being sacked. Mm. Okay. So you have to be proactive. First, understand yourself and what you can do. Uh, because uh, in, in employment, there is, there is this term that permanent and pensionable. So that there's nothing permanent. We've seen people who are on permanent terms being sacked. And it can be very uh, painful when you're sacked and you start life from zero. Uh, what I would advise maybe the youth, I know people have different potentials. There are those who cannot survive out of employment. There are those who cannot survive in, in self-employment. So anything that you are doing, just understand yourself. Know that you are satisfying yourself and you are satisfying your, your egos. So that by the time you make a decision, then it's a decision that you are sure of. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much, Kevin, for coming. I am glad to have this sit down with you because I have learned something from your experience and uh, I am sure my audience has learned as well. That is uh, how it is. You have to know yourself so that you can take that risk. Your friend's path is not the same as yours. It's about you taking the risk to find out what you can do best. Is it employment? Is it self-employment? Go, go ahead and take off because this is how you make it to success. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. This is the way to do it. This is the way